Sometimes you're going to find yourself in scenarios where you have zero control over the lighting and you have zero control over the people moving through. Um, you know, it's, you have very little control of your circumstances. The only thing you really do have control over is careful planning, uh, planning on when, when the light is going to be where and composition. Those are pretty much your, your main choices. So how do you deal with scenarios like that when it comes to creating great images, post-production, all that stuff? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. In this instance, I had, I just photographed, uh, a new art installation at the, uh, new Nashville airport terminal. Uh, they just renovated it. And this company called super abundant atmospheres, uh, who creates these amazing, um, installations, art installations. They hired me to go photograph this particular sculpture. I was going to be there over the course of two days. And of course we're in an airport terminal. So there's constant people walking through, you have zero control over the lighting conditions, etc. They also wanted to make a video. So how do I, how do you, how do you shoot something like this? Well, again, as I mentioned before, the only thing you have control over is composition and careful planning. So careful planning was what I had going for me. Composition I knew wasn't going to be a problem. It's hard to not find a good composition uh, in a space like this. But timing, the, the, what I needed to do is I needed to figure out when the light was going to be coming through the room and reflecting on uh, through this installation, as uh, we'll get into in a minute. Um, I only had pretty much a three hour window where the light was actually going to be hitting the installation. And I only had one day of actual sunshine. Uh, the rest of the days were the weather was somewhat unpredictable and mostly showing overcast. So there, so I, pr I pretty much had a three hour window to capture the light hitting the sculpture the way I wanted it to. And, you know, I also had a bunch of people to deal with. So the way I decided that I was going to pull this off was I was going to shoot set up my camera, compose it properly, and then shoot intervals. Okay. So if you're not familiar with shooting intervals, it's basically, this is how you create a time lapse. You set your camera. Most cameras have this built in now, so I'm not going to give you a tutorial on this, but you set your camera to take an exposure every, you know, however long you determine five, seven, 20 seconds, whatever you determine. And then you can composite those either into a time lapse or you can take all of those images and composite the, the ones that work best for your actual photo, which you're working on. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, not the time-lapse portion of that. I might do that on a separate video, but today I'm going to show you how I'm going about editing things. Now, this is a big project. As you can see uh, in my Lightroom here, there are many time lapses that I did on this and this is how I label them, uh, TL and then the, the different time lapses. So there was a total of 17 time lapses that I did. Some of them were like this one only has 16 images. Um, some, and this one only has 18. So those aren't going to be in the video, but they still are technically time lapses. So every shot that I needed to do multiple intervals with, um, they went into their own separate time lapse folder, but the rest of these I'll probably still be able to use as a video if they have at least 120 frames in them. Okay. Anyway, that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I've already gone through and made my initial selections. What I'm going to do is I'm essentially just going through here and none of these are edited by the way. These are all pretty much straight out of the camera. I did some basic exposure editing so that I could edit this as a time lapse. Uh, so for, but for the most part, there's, not really anything done to these. So this is pretty much straight out of the camera. And all I do is I go through and I'm just finding people where I want them. So, and then I'm marking them with a five. If I see somebody doing something like, so this guy is walking by and he's obviously looking up at the sculpture. So I marked this image as a five so that I, cause I know that I want to try to use that in the photo. And then, you know, I just continue to go through one by one, it took about, I don't know, five minutes or so just to kind of go through and get an initial um, selection of some of the images that I want to use. And I'll, I'll build the the, first, the initial image off of that. And then if I need filler, I'll go through again and find what I need. So uh, what I ended up with was 13 photos that I'm going to composite together. Um, and they all have various reasons that I selected those. This one was for this guy. Um, this was this guy's up here leaning on the escalator, looking at the, uh, looking at it. Um, I wanted some people just randomly, this guy's looking up towards it. Uh, I don't want every single person looking towards the sculpture. That would be a little too on the nose, but I wanted to have some options where there are people. Cause I have plenty of options where people aren't looking at the sculpture. So 
I wanted to find good, clean shots uh, that would work for um, people looking toward the sculpture and clean shots of people that could just be used as filler people. It's like this guy could be a filler person for me. This guy could be a filler person for me. Um, this lady is looking up at the sculpture. Actually, I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to take this one out. This one, she's just standing there looking up at the, the sculpture. And I actually got several frames of her just standing there admiring it, which is kind of neat. This guy would have been good, but he's, um, over, he's overlapping the sculpture and I don't want, or I keep on calling it a sculpture. It's, I guess it's technically a sculpture, but it's an installation. This guy's up taking a photo of it, which is kind of cool. This lady's standing there looking away. This guy's sitting there as well, checking out what this guy's doing. Uh, you get the point. I'm not going to go through all these, but just know that each one of these I selected for a very specific purpose. Now, what I'm going to do first before I bring them in is I'm actually, I'm not going to do much really. I'm just going to make sure that everything is for the most part synced up. You'll also notice because this was intervals that the, t the lighting changed throughout the day. So I have to pick the photo that I'm going to use as my lighting, the, the one that I want to like represent the, the best lighting with. And it's probably going to be one of these photos that has the streaks going through it because it just looks cool. And I also like the way the shadows are reflecting on it here as well. So I think I'm probably just going to use, I don't know, maybe this one, but I, I do need to go through and find a clean frame, a cleaner frame rather that I can use for just the sculpture alone. And it's pro this is probably the cleanest one I have, even though that guy is standing there. But the, the lights and shadows for the most part aren't obstructed. And I'll probably use this one as well. Let's see. Yeah, I'll probably use this one as well. I just want, I, I need a frame where the lights and shadows aren't, aren't obstructed. So, and I think that's probably my best bet. So anyway, we've got our images. We're going to go ahead and select all these. We're going to bring them into Photoshop. Open as layers. Okay. So we've got our layers open. Let's just go ahead and make sure these are all aligned before we get started. And that's another thing too. I actually processed all of the time lapses before I processed the photos because I um, knew I was going to be doing some Photoshopping in them. So if, if you do use this method in the future, make sure you process your time lapse before you process your images. Otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of resetting of settings and it's just going to be kind of a mess. All right. And you can see there's subtle differences here. So this is a pretty clean shot actually right here, but let's go ahead and just go one by one and see what we're dealing with. Um, I think this was just a person standing by. I was going to use her for that. Okay. This lady is filming on the escalator. So I definitely want to use her. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to put her up at the top and I'm just going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to kind of just carve her out and I'm going to add a mask. So she's in the shot now. Now we're going to go to the next one. Um, this is just my clean shot. So I'm just going to rename this. This guy was looking up at there at the sculpture. So I want to use him. We're going to lasso him out and his reflection. Actually, maybe I'll do his buddy too, because well, all three of them. They're close enough together and it adds just people who aren't looking at the sculpture. It adds a little bit of interest to the photo. So every, you can notice that every one that I'm using, I'm adding, I'm moving towards the top. That's just so I can kind of keep track of them. This was my other clean shot, but I also have this guy up here. I'm probably not going to use him because he's not, I don't know. It's going to be between her and this guy but I like how she's actually filming it. Yeah, I feel like I'm probably just gonna end up using her. This lady was looking up at it, so we'll We're going to clean all these up later, but for now, we're just, uh, we're just going through and finding our people that we want to composite. All 
So I'm adding these people. They're, they're not really relevant to the photo, but they do add like this guy is wearing a dark, darker clothes. So he's not super distracting. This lady's wearing brighter clothes. So it kind of starts pulling you into the frame a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, want, I do want to have people that are on the edges that are wearing darker clothes so that there are people there, but it's not, you know, super distracting. Let's see what we have. All right, so for the most part, this lady isn't super interesting to me. So we've got this lady looking up at it, this guy looking up at it, her, her, this guy's kind of looking over there. So it's, it's, I don't want it to be too on the nose. I do need something happening down here, but for the most part, I think we've got a pretty decent composite here. Um, there's not too much more I want to add. Um, let's take a look. I could, yeah, like I said, I could use somebody down here in darker clothes to kind of, uh, redirect into the space a little bit more. Like these people are good because they're facing in toward the subject. This guy's looking toward there, which helps, but they're also wearing dark clothes. So they're not super distracting. They're just there. Um, we want the brightest part of the image to be where the eyes go. And that's kind of what we're doing with this. So let's see, like I said, we need, I need to go back and find somebody who is wearing dark clothes and is down in that bot, the bottom of that frame. So let's just go through these quick and preferably, preferably it's a clean shot where I've got, I don't have a lot of compositing to do with it. This guy could work, but he's already, I already have him selected. All right, so I've got a few options. Let's mess with these before we go too far. So we're gonna try her first because she's clearly looking that direction. Put her up here. She may not be low enough. I kind of want somebody a little bit lower down in this area, but we're gonna give her a shot anyway. That's not bad. Yeah, I'll probably end up using these women here. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna use these women. Okay, so we don't need this. So we pretty much have our composite together. Now um, I'm gonna start taking people away. Actually, I kind of like these people in here too, but I probably won't keep them. So now we need to start cleaning up these composites. Um, this is kind of a more tedious process, but essentially we're just gonna go frame by frame and remove the ones that we don't want people in. So first I'm going to start with these clean shots and we're going to clean, we're going to, I'm going to com combine these. So we're going to get this guy out of the shot here. Okay. So this is our clean shot and this will basically be what we build the composites on top of. So we're going to start with call these extras. And we're just going to erase the things that we don't need. Now we have an image mask selected again, black conceals, white reveals. So if you have your white brush selected, you're going to reveal whatever's on that layer. If you have your black brush selected, you'll have whatever's or you'll block whatever's on that layer or you'll hide rather conceal. Okay. So there's that one's done. All right, so we pretty much <clears throat> we pretty much have everybody composited. It would be nice if there's maybe one more person right here. But the other thing I wanted to bring up quick is when you're dealing with time lapse and compositing, 
you know, you also have to pay attention to the shadows on the, on the ground and on the wall for that matter. But so if we look over here, we've got kind of a situation happening where the shadows are all mismatched because I obviously composited people in here. So we need to, we need to resolve for that. So I'm going to continue to keep on uh, brushing this stuff in and um, we're going to fix those. But I'm going to kind of time lapse through that, but just know that you have to be very uh, aware of the shadows and correcting for those. So all I'm really going to do is click through here and find out where the source of that issue is coming from. And we've found it. So now I just have to resolve that using Photoshop trickery. So I'm going to take the shadows away from her. And you just have to get to the point where the shadows make make start making sense. Like you want you want there to be continuous shadows. You want them you don't want them to be broken up in between um, people's legs and things like that. You just want some consistency. And this is close enough. I'm not going to dial it in too much more. Whoops. But we pretty much have what we need here. And then we've got some issues right here too. We need to fix. All right. Now all the shadows look pretty much consistent for the most part. Like you can understand how some might be a little um, scattered down here because of, you know, everything else. But for the most part, I think we've got, I think we've got what we need here. So clean this up a little bit more. Okay, those look good. Now I'm not seeing any other issues at the moment. I'm, so, you know, some some more may stand out uh, as I continue to look at this, but for the most part, I'm not seeing any other issues that I need to immediately address. That said, I can go ahead and get started um, trying to find something to kind of fill the space in right here. And to be honest with you, I probably don't need anything, but I still want to see what options I have because maybe there's something that'll fill this gap in. But having all these people in there makes it look realistic. But it also looks perfectly staged, in my opinion. So I'm still not in love with this lady facing out that way. So I'm probably going to find somebody to replace her. Um, let's just see what we have down here. I'm going to shut all these off for now. Yeah, we've got this guy. I'll probably use him instead. I also like this shot that there's people standing outside. That's kind of neat. Um... Let's use this guy right here, bring him up. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and find uh, one little spot, something here to fill this spot in. I'm hoping I can find just a blur of people. All right, so we have a couple options. I think that I can probably use either th this girl right here. We'll try her first. Maybe even this guy, use both of them. Oh yeah, they'll work perfect. Fills in all that space. They're not super distracting. He's kind of a little, he might be a little bit too much, but I could probably take her and move her over to the left. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. See ya, buddy. And I'm going to move her over. Maybe right there. Uh, they may be okay together. If I do this. They're still kind of, they're still very prevalent or prominent in the frame so i don't know if i want both of them it's like a little bit too much if you know what i mean i also have this lady let's see what she looks like maybe i'll just use her yeah i think that works and then i can kind of move her wherever i want so at this point, we have all the people where we want them. Uh, now I just need to do some basic corrections to the image. Obviously, I've got to correct all this stuff. 
But for the most part, I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna keep this all layered for future reference in case I need to make any changes, in case the client doesn't need it. But for the most part, I think we're good to go with where we're at. So I need to make some, uh, make a flattened layer here and I'm gonna go ahead and start editing this layer. Now there's a few things. Um, the image as a whole is a little dark. Keep in mind, this is not an architectural image, so it's not so much about the architecture as it is the sculpture. So this this area over here is a lot darker than normal than I would normally have. This brown here is a little dark because I need the focus to be on this. That said, I do want them to be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some basic adjustments here in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to image adjustments and I'm gonna to go to shadows and highlights and show more options. And we're gonna go ahead and just make, make some of this area brighter. You can kind of see everything looks a little brighter now. Obviously I don't want it to look like that because it kind of looks like an HDR image, but we're gonna go ahead and just, just control these a little bit more. Bring our highlights in. So all we're really doing is I'm just I'm just kind of massaging, I guess you could just do making making micro adjustments. I don't want it to look like this. I'm just trying to bring some of the color and tonality back in in the darker tones back into the image, and then I'm going to brush them in, right? So we're going to go ahead and add a mask to this, and I want the um, the dark parts of this image to shine through. So again, white reveals, black conceals. So anything you see that's white um, is going to be revealed. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to subtly brush some of that back in just a little bit. I don't want it to be too much. I've got my brush at 20%. But I'm just bringing some of it in because I just I don't want it to be that dark. I'll bring it up to 30%. So that's probably good. Um, like I said, I just want it to be a very kind of subtle. This is what it looks like before, this is after, right? So it just, it brings some of that color and that dark shadowy area back in. And that's good enough for me. I don't, I don't want the focus to be on the architecture itself. I want the focus to be on the sculpture. So we're good there. I'm gonna create another flattened image. And now we're gonna do some uh, color cast removal. So one of the pieces of feedback that I got is that we need to make sure that some of this this paper is white. Uh, we don't want the orange cast to be on there. So I need to remove some of this yellow color casts from some of the paper, all right? We need, that, we need it to be more white looking universally across the whole thing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. I'm gonna desaturate it. And then I'm gonna do a color mask and only select that tonality in the image. And then we're just gonna brush that out, brush out that yellow so that we have the white coming through. And it's not all over the image, but and we, don't, we don't need to like get super anal with this, but we do want that white to show through and the, the yellow color cast to be kind of gone. So I'm, I'm only, my brush is only at 50%, so we're not like removing it 100%. I just need to uh, just need to reduce it a bit. And again, I'm not being super anal. It's just in areas where I can see a lot of yellow happening. We're just going to brush that out a little bit. Like it's still pretty yellow up here. There we go. And I can probably also do that with the strings as well. So we'll just kind of brush over all this. And that looks good. We're also gonna remove some of the blue color casts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm doing here, I'm using a program called Raya Pro. I'm okay with some of the blue color casts on the walls because that's reality, but I just want to reduce it on the wood. And I'm probably going to go through and brush back in. Whoops, it's a little bit too much. 
Now, the other thing we want to do is I want to brush back in some of this brown um, that was removed from the from the reflections in the color cast. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and add a color, uh, a new layer, and then we're going to go down to the color blend mode. I'm going to select that wood color from, I'm just going to sample it from somewhere where I'm going to be coloring. We're going to go to our brush tool, and I'm just going to start brushing it back in. Obviously it's coloring in the letters. We don't want that. So we'll have to deal with that in a second. And then we also want the ceiling. Again, we're going to brush some of this out. Like it's, it's pretty intense right now and we don't want that, but um, we just want that color to be back in there. So Okay. That's good. So we're going to just dial this back a little bit. You can kind of see what that does here. But again, we're going to dial this back just a little bit. <clears throat> That's good enough for me. And I do want to fix this lettering here. So let's just select these. So I think for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, as I look at it more, I'm obviously going to notice some things, but for the most part, I'm probably about 90% done. Uh, I know there's a few other things that I'll probably end up doing. I'll probably remove some of the yellow casting from the floors a little bit. I just want to dial it back a little bit, but we have to remember that the, the ceiling is brown. Everything around there is brown. So it's, it's going to have some reflection, the light that's coming in. I still want it to look natural, even though it's completely composited. So um, I do see that it's a still a little bit yellow on these strings, and I'd like to maybe dial that back a little bit. So let's go ahead and go here. Oops, that's not what we want. We'll go to 50%. Yeah. So this is before and after. You can kind of see how we just dialed back that yellow cast that was on the strings and on the paper itself. And it looks a little more white. So this brings us better, closer to the direction that we want to, that we want to end up. Like I said, I still probably want to dial back the yellows a little bit. So maybe I'll do one last adjustment layer and I'm just going to go to the yellow and we're going to see where things are still really yellow. And yeah, it's pretty much all over this floor area. So we're just going to bring that back and I'm going to invert that layer and I'm going to manually brush back where I want it brushed back. So my brush is still at 50%. I'm going to bring it back down to 30 and I'm just going to start brushing out some of these yellower areas. Again, we don't want, I don't, I don't want to remove entirely remove the yellow because it's, it's supposed to be there, but that does feel a little bit better. Um, it's a very subtle amount, but it feels a little more controlled. Um, I think maybe I'll brush a little bit more of this yellow in because you can kind of see there's a pretty stark difference between the yellow over here and the white wall over here. So let's just, uh, dial this back a little bit more. That feels pretty good. We're going to go ahead and create one more image. I'm going to bring it into luminar and this is where i have some presets made that i um use to do some finishing touches on a lot of my photos really it's it's nothing i couldn't do in in photoshop but i it, i just prefer using this um this preset i made just adds a little bit of contrast and saturation so as you can see it's a very subtle amount a little bit of saturation a little bit of contrast but i i like this as a finished image so we're going to go ahead and save this and we are as of right now done with this photo like i said what i usually do is i will i'm not going to adjust the verticals or anything like that yet i'm going to keep it layered like this i'm going to save this file that way i can come back later revisit it and if there's anything i want to change that's bothering me i can do it at that time but for the most part I've landed where I want to be with this image so i'm pretty happy with it again i'll reevaluate uh, reevaluate it later but for the most part i think I think this is a pretty good image. Okay, so it's the next day. I'm on, uh, I, I've been continuing to edit, to edit this project and I just wanted to show you the difference. Now, I came back and I, I revisited this image uh, this morning and I realized there are a lot of people in this photo and I'm okay with that, but I, I think I'm gonna probably 
remove some of them. Uh, I haven't entirely decided yet, but I found that like these guys aren't really necessary. They're not contributing much. This guy is helping a little bit. These people back here add a lot of stuff here. Um, these people don't really need to be here, but I think maybe one of them could, or I could have somebody else there instead. Uh, this guy doesn't need to be there. Point being is I can reduce the amount of people I have in the image. Uh, I haven't entirely decided that yet. So I'm going to come back to that. But I, the one I just finished, I wanted to show you that right now. This is one that I just finished and this I decided now I could have, I shot a hundred and I shot 500 photos of this scene. So I, I had plenty of people to pick from, but, and I, I'm not going to go through the whole editing process cause I'll show you how I showed you how I did it. But on this one, I intentionally decided to keep it minimal amount of people. And I like the feeling of this better. So I only wanted to come in. I'm not, again, I'm not going to walk through the whole editing process of this one. I just finished this one, but I have all of the compositional element, elements that I want in this image. Now the image itself is compositionally sound. It follows all the rules. Um, but I have people that are pointing. These people are also compositional elements that are leading toward the sculpture as well. So like, for example, these people are facing toward the sculpture. These guys are looking at the sculpture. These girls are elements in the photo, but like if I did not have them there, there would just be this big open space right there. And it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, just not that impressive. I did originally have people down in this area, but it was just taking away from the sculpture because it's kind of hidden behind the escalator and the platform here. So I wanted in this image, I decided to keep it very minimal with people. And I just wanted to share that thought with you really quick. Again, I didn't go through and I'm not going to re-edit it all for you, but I can kind of show you what I like. I, I, I had all of these different images selected and I was going to use pretty much some element from most of these. And I was going to have a scene that was filled up like the previous one again. And I just opted out of doing that. And I, landed right here on this. So just wanted to share that one last thought before I wrap this video up. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.